Hello, welcome to my uh, YouTube video. Now in this video, we are going to look at the books of prime entry, sometimes referred to as the books of original entry. You can also call them subsidiary books. Now, books of prime entry, these are the books in which entries are made before they are posted to the ledger. These are the books of accounts in which entries are made before they are posted to the ledger. Now, these books of prime entry, they are prepared from source documents, such as the invoices, the receipts, the credit notes, the debit notes, and so on. Now, the books of prime entry uh, provide the information that is posted to the ledgers, that is posted to the ledger accounts. So, these books of prime entry, they reduce the bulk of the work in the ledger. So, we are going to see the different books which are kept by the business. We have seven subsidiary books or books of prime entry. We have the sales day book, the purchases day book, the petty cash book. We have the journal, the purchases returns day book, the sales returns day book, as well as the cash book. So we are going to look at one by one. We see what is entered in that book of prime entry. So we start with the sales day book. Now the sales day book, sometimes it is referred to as the sales day journal. This is a book of prime entry that is used to record the details and amounts of goods and services sold on credit. Of course, we know that many businesses you find that a large proportion of their sales are made on credit rather than for cash. Remember, for each credit sale, the selling firm sends what we call a sales invoice to the buyer, showing full details of the goods sold and the prices of the goods. But of course, the seller will also keep a duplicate of this document for the business's records. So the sales invoice provides information for compiling the sales day book. You can see how the sales day book looks like. We have to show the date, then we have to show the details. Details, here we are looking at the name of the customer. So you can see the poll T. Cockburn, C. Cutter, D. Stevens and Company. Those are the names of the customers. Of course, we have to show the invoice number as well as the folio and then the amount. So that is how the sales day book looks like. It lists all the sales made on credit. Then we have the sales returns day book sometimes referred to as the Return Inwards Journal. Now, this is a book of prime entry in which the details and the cost of any goods returned to the business by the customers are recorded. So, the goods which have been returned by the customers are called returns. Of course, don't forget that returns reduce the business's sales because the price of the returned goods must be refunded to the customers. But we need to find out, or we need to know, what are some of the reasons for the return of goods by the customers? Of course, maybe the goods uh, we are found to be damaged on delivery. Customers have bought more than they needed. Uh, customers received more than they ordered. Mm. The supplied goods were known to have the quality ordered or were the wrong color and so on. So, all the details 
of the goods that have been returned, they are entered in the sales returns the book. The format is there. We have to show the date, the name of the customer. Uh, we have to show the credit note number, folio, and the amount. So that is the sales returns the book. A credit note is always raised and issued to the customer. So all credit notes are recorded in the sales returns the book. The third book of prime entry, we can look at the purchases the book. What is the purchases the book? Now the purchases the book are sometimes referred to as the purchases journal. Is a book of prime entry in which goods or services bought on credit are recorded. Now the information used to write the purchases the book is obtained from the incoming invoices from the supplier, sorry, from the seller of those goods or the supplier. Of course, this invoice to the buyer, that is the purchase invoice. So this book of prime entry is only used to record the items bought by the business for resale or materials or components used to manufacture goods or deliver services. So if you purchase a fixed asset such as a machinery, then that one is not recorded in the purchases day book. That purchase of a fixed asset is recorded in a different book of prime entry as we are going to see. So that is the format of the purchases day book. The date, the name of the supplier, the invoice number, folio, and then the amount. Purchases returns day book. Sometimes referred to as the purchases returns outward journal. Of course, that is a book of prime entry that records the goods that the business has bought for resale, but has returned these goods back to the supplier. To the supplier. So the goods that have been returned are referred to as the return outwards or purchase returns. Of course, on returning the goods, the buyer sends what we call a debit note to the supplier indicating the reasons for returning the goods and stating the amount to which the firm returning the goods is entitled. Of course, the seller in return sends what we call a credit note to the buyer. So meaning that there is an incoming credit note. The incoming credit note, of course, uh, or the debit note is used to prepare the return outward journal. It's used to repair to prepare the return outwards journal. So you see the format that we have to show the date, then the name of the supplier, the debit note number, the folio number, as well as the amount. So that is the purchases returns the book. This is your tutor, Senior Huntington. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to comment. In case you have questions, please, you can post your questions in the comments section below. Now the next book of prime entry is the Petty Cash Book. The next book of prime entry is the Petty Cash Book. Now a Petty Cash Book, this is a cash book for small payments. It's a cash book for small payments. Normally most businesses will keep a small amount of cash on the premises to make those occasional small payments in cash. For example, the staff refreshments, postage stamps, payments to office cleaners, tax payers, etc. So those are normally paid out using petty cash. When you try to look at the petty cash book, uh, this is maintained on the basis of what we call the interest system. Now, under the impress system, the petty cash is kept at an agreed sum so that each topping is equal to the amount paid out in the period. We shall look at the petty cash book and I will show you how 
to come up with a petty cash book using the available information. But of course, uh, this is the format of the petty cash book. There will be a column for receipts, folio, then date, details. Now, under details, uh, in that column, we'll show the different payments that have been made, the voucher numbers, the total amount. Then, of course, there will be an analysis of payments. Those are the columns, motor expenses, staff traveling expenses, postage, etc. So, depending on uh, how you can classify those different payments that have been made using the petty cash. We have the cash book as another book of prime entry. Of course, a cash book consists of the cash account and the bank account put together in one book. So the bank column contains details of payments uh, made by check, direct transfers from the bank account, and of course, that money that has been received and paid into the bank account, all those will be recorded in the bank columns of the cash book. Then the cash column contains details of payments made by check and of cash that has been received. Of course, you can see the format uh, of the cash book, date, uh, the details, then the cash column, the bank column. That is debit and credit. That is debit and credit. Lastly, we can look at what we call the journal book. We have another book of prime entry known as the journal book. Sometimes it is referred to as the journal journal or the journal proper. Now, this book of prime entry, of course, it's used to record the details of any other transaction that cannot be recorded in any other book. When we are recording transactions in the journal, we are doing what we call journalizing. So if they say journalize the transactions, it simply means that you're going to record the transactions in the journal. Of course, we can use the journal uh, to record the sale of fixed assets or capital equipment on credit, record the purchase of fixed assets, uh, record the closing entries at the end of each accounting period. The journal can also be used to correct errors found in the trial balance. We can use it to record provisions and reserves such as provisions for depreciation, provisions for body dates and so on and so on. So we use it to record those transactions that are not recorded in the other books of prime, prime entry. Now the journal, uh, it has five main columns, as you can see them. The date column, the details column, that shows uh, the accounts to be debited, and then the account to be credited. And of course, it also has a narration of the transaction as you can see. Then the folio column, of course, it shows the ledger page number where the transaction is recorded. The debit column records the amount debited to the account named in the details column. Then the credit column that will record the amount to be credited to the account named in the details column. So that is the format of the journal, you can call it the journal journal or the journal proper. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share. I remain your tutor, Senior Huntington. Bye-bye.